Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could ask everybody to pause this morning, we'll begin this morning with our opening ceremonies. We'll begin, we'll begin with a prayer immediately followed by the National Anthem and Flag Raising. Uh, Chaplain Jeremy Weasel will offer the invocation for us this morning. You would bow your head with me, please. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning just grateful and thankful for allowing us to wake this morning, Lord, and known for who you are, what you've done for us, sending your Son to die on the cross for our sins. I pray, Lord, for another wonderful day for the American Professional Association, for all the hard work and dedication that went into the show. Lord, did all the demonstrations go smoothly. All the participants and uh, visitors would just enjoy the time of uh, seeing the old ways for our forefathers as we continue to show the youngsters uh, the ways that it was done in farming and just the tractors and steam engines and the horses and everything else. I pray, Lord, you just uh, continue to allow us to have another dry day with a, a good show. We just love you and we thank you. We call us on Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This is the 60th annual American Threshman Association Steam and Gas Threshing Show. We are uh, among the older of the shows. We are not the oldest. There are shows that started before us. Sure. Um, but we were started about the same time some of the other big shows were, were forming and thinking. And, and our, our forefathers noticed these shows coming up and, and saw this and said, hey, you know, we're involved in this, we're interested in this too. Let's get a group together. So way back in 1959, they got a group together and they decided to start this. And there was an organization group of a, about a dozen core members that got together and they signed an agreement they was gonna put on a steam show. So they organized and did that. And they found a location to do that at. It was actually in Highland, Illinois. And they, uh, they gathered up and started that show. You didn't, you didn't really have horses on the farm and you didn't have much steam around on the farm at that point in time, but steam was the most recent thing. And you had prairie tractors and things like that too. So that was the focus of the early shows was to, was to show because you were actually mostly one generation removed. The, the kids that were coming out had never seen steam run and, and, and very rarely did they see horses working anymore either. So it was an opportunity to come out and say, hey, kids, this is the way my dad 
or your grandpa did this. This is what your grandpa had to do to, to make a living. So now we're a couple of more generations away and we're actually trying to teach people how our grandfathers and our great grandfathers had to make a go of it with farming. So, uh, you know, they're, they're, there's a lot of air conditioned cab tractors running around out there now and they're really, really great to run but you don't understand what it really took. The old timers, it was, it was a way of life. They didn't come to things like this because they were too busy staying at home, taking care of the farm to feed right. the family. Right. And, and back in that day, uh, a, a family could survive on a small acreage farm. 80 acre farm, that, that could have been considered a big farm and, and was enough to support a family with the livestock and, and you, didn't, you were self-sufficient. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at RuralHeritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. Corn, boom corn, uh, corn just stuck with it many years ago. It just stuck with that's what it stuck with. Boom uh -huh. corn. Yeah. Just like a lot of things. I guess at one time wheat is even they called wheat corn even at one time. Really? Okay. That's what I was told, yeah. And a lot of things were called corn. They make but, a lot of brooms out of straw, right? They make uh, or uh, different kinds of different grasses and stuff. Okay, different yeah. plants. Yeah, different yeah. Grasses and stuff. What's the advantage of, of uh, corn? It's really tough. It's uh -huh. really tough. It's, it's, even cutting it is tough to cut it. And it'll last a long time. Yep. Your grasses won't last that long. Right. They wear away. Softer. Yep. Yeah.
good. Get it. Isn't bad at all. Yeah, it looks like it's much better. It could use a little moisture, but it's it's rolling over. Yeah, it's getting deeper. Better than I expected. So tell me what you were saying before about how the if the furrow gets squirrely, if it gets real hard, the ground's hard pulling. You have to because the plow wants to uh, pull straight. It should be over here for line of draft. It's out of draft a little bit with the three eveners, and you have to move your uh, hitch over one notch because you want to keep the plow in the furrow and if it's real sandy and it doesn't pull hard you move it the other way and uh, it'll stay over against the furrow because the sand doesn't push against the, the uh, mold boards enough to hold the plow against the furrow wall the wheel but uh, every feels a little different yep and when you say the line of draft is off a little bit it's because you got three horses because yeah. they're not it's not straight Right, it's just a hair the power off. is moving over to the side. And two horses, three horses on one bottom, a lot worse yet. Right. Your draft is. On two bottom, you can get close. But uh, it's still off enough that when you got a dead hard pull, you'll pull it up out of the furrow and just it'll, the wheel right about on top of the furrow on the ground. So, um, hey, Moses. So you would see threshing crews come through and, and thresh? Right, right, oh yeah. Yeah, I uh, pitched a good many bundle in them old separators. Yeah. I run a bundle wagon mostly. Okay. And I also, when we got all done, I uh, went with the crew on the separator. Okay. You know, like uh, pitched in the field. See, the uh, separator owner, he furnished a crew like uh, pitchers, and we called them a bagger, uh -huh. sacked uh, grain, and a stacker. We run the pipe, made the straw stack. Right, right. That's a dusty job, <laughs> depending on the yeah, way the wind's blowing. Like, I always enjoyed that, though, you know? Did you? It's fun to make a stack. Oh, well, I didn't do that. I, oh, okay. I, worked, I pitched in the field. Okay. See, That's that, a lot of work. That was clean. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was always clean out there in the field. Right, right. But uh, when we went through the run thrashing, well, I run a bundle wagon. And they was like about uh, eight, ten people that was in a run, so to speak. You know, we'd help each other. And I'd start out, and uh, this would take several weeks. Was it, um, was it oats that you're putting up mostly? Wheat oats. Wheat and oats. Uh -huh. And in the fall of the year, uh, cow peas. Cow peas, okay. You ran those through the separator too, yeah. And then a little later on, you shred corn fodder. Okay. You in, you, in silage, you would shred it. Oh yeah, we've done that too. Did you did you blow that up into a silo then? Uh -huh. Run a power takeoff off a tractor? Well, a belt, you should the belt, yeah. And a cutter. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We used to go out in the morning with a corn knife. <clears throat> And we cut corn till about noon. Okay. The whole crew. Okay. And, and just let it lay. Yeah. We okay. throw it down. Then we come out after dinner, pick it up, put it on the wagon, haul it up there to the cutter, and blow it up in the sun. <laughs> you know, it was work, but for some reason or other, it was good camaraderie. Yeah. Right. Right. I enjoyed. It. You know, that's one of the big differences between farming today and farming then, was the community of people that were brought together for each of the different jobs. You'd have your whole family, plus a bunch of hired men, plus neighbors, all contributing at each other's farm, right? 
And let's not forget the ladies. Right. They what were they cooked, doing? They cooked the meal. They fed a group. You know, it took about 17, 18 men to keep a big separator running. Uh-huh. That's what the... Well, you had uh, about uh, eight bundle wagons because those big separators, you know, they needed up. Yeah, right, right, right. And, uh, what do you remember them cooking for you? Oh, I'll tell you what, they would go out there in the smokehouse, uh -huh. get some of that good old home cured ham, uh -huh. and uh, go out there and dig them fresh potatoes. Oh, I'll tell you what, them lady was kind of in competition with each other. Okay. You know, they See who can make good. See who would eat theirs first, who would finish off their dish first, maybe. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they, they, they cooked good meals. They, they sure did. I mean, you know, they done it on an old wood range out there. They didn't have electric stove. Right, right, right. Some of them had an oil stove, but most of it was all on an old wood range. And that was a lot of camaraderie for them as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they had a good time. They enjoyed it. Neighbors really knew each other. They sure did. Well, we had uh, had a dairy. Okay. Well, I had a couple of brothers, and uh, you know, at that time, whenever you was seven, eight years old, you was put out there behind an old gentle team, a heron, or do something like that. Right. Start right. Out. Right. You learn to drive horses pretty early. Oh yeah. You learn to communicate with them pretty early. Well, what right. they're saying, and and they learn to listen to you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you know. We worked them every day. We was around them every day, and uh, they could just more or less sense what you wanted to do. Right, right. You telegraph back and forth. Yeah. You could tell what they were thinking. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, it was. Of course, I always loved horses and mules. No. But just whenever we was plowing, you know, you would plow. Yeah, here it is. You was out there and you saw them plow. You know. You start out, you plow, and you throw it up together. And then after you got this land so big, you turn it the other way like they are out there, and you throw it apart. You go down there, and you make about one or two turns, and that's all. Them horses knew which way you was going to turn. And then you start plowing it apart, what we call the part. Same thing. Go down there and make a turn or two, and they do get to the end. They would just automatically turn that direction. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I I love yeah, horses and mules. I had some and no. until I got to where I couldn't so. take care of them. Yeah, you look like you're doing real well. You, you, you're feeling good. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're lucky. Count my blessings every morning. Sure. Right. 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 Oh,
is always held based upon the third Saturday of August. So it's always held the weekend of the third Saturday of August. So next year happens because the first of the month falls on a Saturday. It happens to be the earliest on the calendar our show can always be. And we start on Wednesday evening. So our first official activities, we have a little parade uptown right, uh, right after five o'clock. We have a little parade uptown. Um, take our tractors on a little two mile parade route through town. And then we begin with some uh, horse pull activities on Wednesday evening. Wednesday is a setup day for us, but by Wednesday evening we have horse activities, and, and we've got some people out here that you know come out to watch those specifically. And then we kick off full strength on Thursday morning. Uh, uh, once we have our flag raising ceremony in the morning, we kick off full strength and run through Sunday. Uh, as is typical with any show, there'll be some exhibits start leaving on Saturday evening on Sunday morning, just like there was some that are just now arriving now because we work around people's work schedule, but we have something going on out here through the weekend. Uh, on Sunday, we actually finish up with an antique tractor pull. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.